Hey guys, welcome to this tutorial series on Spring MBC. I am going to cover all different topics of the Spring MBC. So currently I am covering the Spring MBC validation. So I have already covered minimum max size pattern email validation. And this video is about not empty and range validation. So let's get started. So this is my project which I am using for this tutorial so in this project I have created different classes so if you have not seen my couples last couples of video so please check those video first so uh, this is my channel crack java here you can find out spring mbc uh, tutorial series and you can see you can check all these videos like sp introduction I had the introduction and I have explained the step by step how we can configure Spring MVC using Eclipse then STS so you can directly subscribe my channel also so let's get started for this video so this is the the controller that I have created for customer where I have a register URL and I am validating the customer class so if you see this class so this is the class where I have used these all validation size pattern for password email validation for email and to repeat again I am using valid like in the controller configurations if you see I am using valid annotation to annotate it uh, to validate it and model attribute is the customer so this is the JSP page that I have created here I have username password and customer ID that I am I have created for this video so let's create a customer ID here and we can check the range validation so range validation is actually used to specify particular integer value in range let's say we want our customer ID should be between 10 to 15 or 100 to 200 100 to 10,000 something so we can specify the range so for that let's we have an annotation range annotation that comes from Java X validation constraint uh, package and this package uh, is I have configured in the pound.xml file so let's create a variable so it should be int customer ID we can give this customer ID okay so we need to create getter and setter for this okay let's create that okay select the customer ID click okay okay so so get a setter are created so range in the range we have to specify minimum value so let's give it let's say we can minimum we can give 10 value and max we can give 10,000 not more than that so let's give a message to user also okay so message should be customer ID must be between 10 to 1000 okay and to to test the not empty not empty is used to to test the uh, is null and empty value for the string so we can do that here also so let's create one more field for that so it should be a string okay so let's say we have first name for customer and it should be not empty okay and we can give a message to the user that that customer 
first name is not empty okay and let's create the getter and setter for this also okay generate getter and setter okay select this okay yep so get and setter are created so let's start the server before that let's again repeat the flow that how this uh, these all validation validations are working so uh, so the first we have imported the java x dot validations package in our pom dot xml file so yep so this is our pom.xml file so here we have java x dot validations okay so so i have imported oiz hibernate validator so this will have java dot x dot validation package so here we are getting the leaf file so after that if you see our controller Okay, so to validate any model attribute, uh, we have to use valid annotation, and we need to uh, provide binding result. So this binding result will check for the any error. So whenever user enter any value to the form, so let's say this username, I have this validation size. So if the size is more than five, so this message will be sent to the user because of this valid annotation so this valid which will check for all all validation that we have put it into customer class and this binding result check for the error so if there is an error we are sending response to register.jsp otherwise it will goes to success.jsp so yep so let's test it out so the server is started and we can refresh the URL so this is our JSP page where we have username password customer ID and this is our model attribute that is a customer and these are the field username password so if you see we are using path so it means this variable name should be same as the variable name that we have used in the POJO class so this name should be same with the uh, this path that we are giving here so it will automatically map this to the model attribute so this model attribute will comes when we first time call the get mapping that is this mapping so it will set this object and it will pass this to the view okay so this is the form error that we are sending and I have used the tag library of spring MBC form tag li library so yep let's hit the register URL okay we have an error let's see what the error is saying customer ID being okay it looks like we don't our name is different so if you see we have customer id here and the customer we might have some different yep the name is the here the it is in uppercase so okay now it will work let's hit it, hit it again register Okay, so again it is saying some error invalid property customer ID is not reachable okay let's see it out again I think yeah here also we need to modify it okay fine let's hit it again yep now it is working 
so for the customer id we have given the gains from 10 to 10000 so let's keep more than 10000 okay so it is saying customer id must be between 10 to 10 uh, 1000 so if we give only one so again we will get this message okay so let's correct the password first yep so so if we give 11 value okay okay so now it is not showing the error so uh, we need to check the not empty so we have the first name field that we have created for that to check the not empty so let's do that we need to create one more field it should be first name okay and let's change this this also okay that's it so now again hit the URL okay so it came so now as you see it is saying customer first name is not empty so if we don't give any value to this it will show this message so if we provide some values so yep it is working fine so in this way we can use non empty field to any of the string that we want such that a user will not send the empty value to the server side so and again we can specify when we want to specify any gains for any digits okay so this is about these two annotations uh, um, validation so in my next video i will cover other validation that spring mbc provides so thanks for watching see you next video bye bye